the walking writing tour of Historic Upper Sandusky continues with part three, Other Places of Interest. Other Places of Interest provides information on structures or places of historical significance scattered throughout the town. Unless you are an intrepid walker, a car would probably be the best way to see this section of the walking riding tour. In the center of town is the Wyandotte County Courthouse. The present Wyandotte County Courthouse is the third courthouse since Wyandotte County was formed in 1845. It is the only courthouse paid for by the taxpayers of Wyandotte County. The first courthouse was the old Indian Council House that was appropriated by the commissioners after the Indians departed in 1843. It was free. The first regular term of the Court of Common Pleas began in July 1845 in the Council House. The second courthouse, built around 1851, was paid for by the sale of lots in Upper Sandusky. These were donated by the government from land that was part of the reservation. It took several years to build this courthouse, as the builders could not meet the terms of their contracts. According to the 1913 History of Wyandotte County, this is a quote, it was a poor paying, disheartening contract. These men found it impossible to carry out their engagement, end quote. The building cost $9,500 at final count, and it burned down. The present facility was dedicated in 1900. The exterior sandstone came from the North Amherst quarries of the Cleveland Stone Company, quarried at a depth of 100 feet below the surface. The stone was shipped here in huge blocks and cut and dressed on the courthouse lot. The interior of the courthouse is one of the most beautiful in Ohio and contains many murals and a beautiful stained glass dome, as well as an imposing marble staircase. The courtroom scene of the film Shawshank Redemption was filmed in the Common Pleas courtroom on the third floor. Money from the movie was used to renovate the courtroom. Next to the courthouse, facing Wyandotte Avenue, is the Wyandotte County Jail. The Wyandotte County Jail is the last remaining 19th century built facility still functioning as a jail in Ohio. The first jail in Upper was a small frame structure known as the Indian Jail. It was burned down and replaced by a jail built in 1846. Ray Godfrey's book, Pictorial Memories, states that the 1846 jail was raised and the current jail built in 1889. The 1889 building was complete. It had an execution area and a residence for the sheriff and his family. I remember when Dean McAllister was sheriff and he and his family lived in the jail. His wife, Peggy, cooked for the prisoners. So far as we know, only one person was ever executed in the jail by hanging. As we continue walking south from the Central Business District, we find this building which currently houses Susie's Pizza. It was constructed in 1880 at a cost of $30,000 by Adolph Bilhart, great-grandfather of Christine Bilhart Cope. Dr. Adolph Bilhart emigrated from Saxony, Germany in 1858. He came directly to Upper Sandusky, where he practiced medicine until 1866. At that time, he opened a drugstore, and that became his major business. From 1881 to 1922, the building housed the Bilhart Drugstore on the lower floor. At one time, the upper floors of the building housed the San Felice El Verso Cigar Factory. The company logo can still be seen on the north wall. The company consolidated operations in Lima, Ohio in 1927, and closed this factory. Dr. Bill Hart's house, currently owned by the Kriegers, was on the north side tour. This is a better view of the San Felipe and El Verso logo. Note the decorative eaves and the beautiful stone lintels above the windows on the building. At one time, several floors of this building were a hotel and were very elegant. What do these three buildings have in common? All three buildings were designed by the same architects, Yost and Packard from Columbus, Ohio. All three buildings were designed and built around 1900. John Stewart Methodist Church was built in 1899, the Wyandotte County Courthouse in 1900, and the Presbyterian Church in 1900. On the northeast corner of South 7th Street and Johnson Street is John Stewart Methodist Church, originally named Methodist Episcopal Church. 
the cornerstone stone is engraved First Methodist Church. Since 1845, the year that Wyandotte County was organized, there has been a Methodist church on this corner. The present structure is the third church to stand on the site. The church was built of blue stone or blue limestone. The name was changed to John Stewart Methodist in honor of John Stewart, the first Methodist missionary to the Indians in North America. The cornerstone was laid and the church completed in 1899. Yost and Packard were the architects. Both the Methodist and Presbyterian churches, as well as the Old Trinity Evangelical Church, number two on the North Side Tour, are built on the Akron plan. That means inside all three churches have a fan-shaped sanctuary with small rooms opening off the sanctuary. These small rooms could be closed off by a folding door and used for Sunday school or could be left open for additional seating at Christmas, Easter, or high attendance Sundays. John Stewart has since altered the inside of the church and reoriented the front of the church to the rear for handicap accessibility. The small rooms are no longer there, but First Presbyterian and the former Trinity Evangelical still have the original configuration of rooms. On the southeast corner of South 7th and Johnson Street is the beautiful red sandstone First Presbyterian Church. The present church is the third building to stand on this site. The church was organized by seven members in 1845 at a meeting held in the old Mission Church. Services were held in the old Council House. In 1847, a small frame church was erected. It sat on heavy posts, and according to church history, worshipers frequently had their prayers interrupted when pigs would run under the church. Each family was asked to pay $2.87 per pew. In 1872, a brick church was dedicated on this corner. After evening services in this church on May 7, 1899, it was discovered that one of the walls of the church was separating from the remainder of the building, and if a heavy rain train passed by, it was in danger of collapsing. The building was condemned and razed. Fortunately, the Columbus architects, Yost and Packard, were in town, and they were engaged to draw up plans for a new Presbyterian church. The current church was begun in 1899 and dedicated on June 24, 1900. The north window in the sanctuary was purchased with funds raised by the Little Church Workers Class. Funds for the other two large windows were donated by church members. New pews were purchased in 1907. The church is Elizabethan in design, with semicircular seating in the sanctuary and Akron plan for the church school at the side of the sanctuary. Next to the Methodist Church on Johnson Street is the Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge was organized in 1850 and is still an active lodge. The Masonic Temple was dedicated in 1905. It is typical Greek Revival architecture. One of the other places of interest is Old Mission Church. The church was the first Methodist mission in North America. The mission was established for the Wyandotte Indian Nation. It was built in 1824 at a cost of $1,333.33 using government funds. The church is constructed of blue limestone quarried from the bed of the Sandusky River and carried by wagons pulled by teams of oxen to the building site. Reverend James B. Finley was the architect. Reverend Finley insisted that there be membership roles and that the church be organized under the discipline of the Methodist Episcopal Church. Members of the First Missionary Society in 1828 included these names, Summon Duwat, Manon Q, Lump on the Head, Stand in the Water, Tall Man, Dr. Gray Eyes, and Squire Gray Eyes. His daughter, Margaret Gray Eyes, also called Mother Solomon, was the last Wyandotte Indian to live in Upper Sandusky. Several of the Wyandots are buried in the small cemetery next to the Mission Church. The Wyandotte Nation was removed to Kansas and later moved to Oklahoma in 1843. At that time, the deed to the mission was given by the Wyandotte Nation to the Methodist Church to hold in trust until they could return. In 1960, Old Mission Church was designated a National Shrine of the United Methodist Church. In October 2016, the mission and two acres surrounding the building in Old Mission Cemetery was deeded back to the Wyandotte Nation by the United Methodist Church.
The first public school in Upper Sandusky is now a residence on South 4th Street. It looks very much like it did when it was a public school. The porch has been altered, but the shape of the building is the same. The porch originally had a shed-style roof and simpler columns. This area of South Sandusky Avenue was known as Doctor's Row. The original frame buildings that stood here included the Ferry Theater that was there from 1910 through 14. These buildings were raised in 1922. The current brick buildings were constructed specifically for doctors. From 1924 through 34, Dr. Frederick Keenan, F-R-E-D-R-I-C-K, practiced medicine here. In 1939, Dr. Frederick Keenan, F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K, the first Dr. Keenan's son, practiced medicine. At one point, all of the following doctors were in this area. Doctors Rhodes, Solikoff, Brown, Schofield, Craig Bowman, and Wattsberger. The Boxcar Tavern on Hicks Street is the oldest continuously operating business in Upper Sandusky. Established in 1869 by Michael O'Donnell, it has also been known as Shorty's Tavern and Leek's Tavern. When I asked one group what the tavern sold during Prohibition, someone answered, the same thing they sell now. The tavern is conveniently located right next to a railroad and bootleg alcohol could easily have been dropped off. I understand that was how the speakeasy in Bucyrus, Ohio, associated with Al Capone, received their bootleg liquor. This look at the Boxcar Tavern concludes our virtual tour of Historic Upper Sandusky. Additional places of interest can be found in the Historic Upper Sandusky Walking Tour brochure. The brochure may be obtained from the Wyandotte County Commerce, Chamber of Commerce, or Visitors Bureau. I hope you have enjoyed learning about Historic Upper Sandusky. Thanks for watching.